Hello, this is Jeff Robertson, National Sales Manager for Penton Audio again, and this is a short tutorial video on how to update the software in your IDA8C control unit and IDA8S secondary unit for your mass notification control system. Let's get started. I happen to know I've got a system right now and I'm running 3.006, so I'll go ahead and open up the software for 3.006. And one thing I always check, I can see down here with my device management window, I do not see any of my devices, although I know I'm connected. So as a good habit to get into, as we kind of explained in our connecting and compiling video, always go up to tools, go to your communications, and then see what the software is trying to communicate out of your PC. And as mine always defaults to wireless, I change it to my NIC card. And hopefully the devices, as we see there, just popped up. All right, so I've got connection in there, and I only did this because I wanted to show you how to read a version of software. So I just highlight the C, and we go down our menu on the right after we highlight, and we will see there is an option that says Read Version. So we will read a version, and we can see right there on the Master Control Unit, 3006. That's what we want to see. On the Secondary Unit, is 3006. So that is good. We know everything's fine. I got the right software. I'm going to close this software because what you need to do is make sure you have the software version open that you want to update to. Now, some software versions will allow you to update back and forth from another version, but some will actually cause problems and cause you to regrade and reset and do a lot of crazy things if you get it locked up. As a good rule, always open up the software that you wish to update the system to. The reason for this is after you update it, when you're trying to talk to it by telling it to reset or do this or redeploy, you want to make sure that you're doing that with the software that the machine's actually running. I want to upgrade to one of our beta versions here that we just got shortly at the time of this video for a Terra Manager interface. I will open this up and we'll go to Device Management window. Uh, once again, Communication tools change it to my NIC card and they should pop up here momentarily even though the software is totally different version than what's in the controller units firmware as you can see it still sees the units now if I went and tried to do a reverse file or whatever it would give me errors it would say check version fail there you know you're running on a totally different software than what the machine has in there so I'm not even going to attempt that notice my mappings not even here so what I want to do is update these to the 3.0018 from the 3006 software that happens to be residing in the machines right now. As a rule, always update the secondary units first before you do the controller. There is a reason for that. The reason is the secondary units, once you update them, they could lose communications with the control unit. Not to worry, because when you update the control unit, then they'll all be on the same software platform and be able to talk to each other. Then there's no way to get to the secondary units to push the update files to. It'll fail. It won't let you do it because they're not talking to each other. So always do the secondary units first, then go back and do the control units. In some rare instances, you actually have to go back after you update a control unit and then re-update the secondary units if you're making too big of a jump in the software so but let's give this a shot all right I'm gonna highlight my network and I can highlight either one of these at this point it doesn't matter this is my whole local network here and over in your menu to the right scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see update click on update all right now once we have the update you'll see here's everything if I had six secondary units to one controller they would all be listed here as well so what I want to do first is go locate my update file so I'll go to my browser folder and right up here and if you ever wanted to know where the defaults are I'm using Windows 7 I'll just I'll go back here you go to your computer C drive your program files 86 and you'll see a TS folder and under a TS here's all your studios and all your other TS programs your Terracom programs whatever you've installed this is the default folder where it will put them and as you can see right here I got 18B for beta and I'll click that and every one of these at Studio folders has an update file folder at the very bottom 
we'll open that up and here's all my different IDA8 devices so the first one like I said we want to do our secondary device I'll open that and you'll see the, the update folder and every update file has an extension ASU that stands for a T studio update file so we'll highlight click open and then once I do that the controller disappears from my list because it won't even let me try to update the controller secondaries with the wrong update file uh, so you can't mess up it so bad so but all my secondary units will be listed here I only have one um, so I could either highlight one and the um, all the network highlights because there's only one but if there were several of them I could do one at a time or I could just click this all button right here and would push the update to all the secondary units at the same time so you don't have to do each one individually I go down here to the update icon at the lower right and click that and this will take about two to three minutes so I'll be back with you shortly okay and as you see there the update completed and it's asking me to reset machine now you can reset your machine and it's no problem when you do it's going to power you know go through its reboot process for the secondary units once you do that you're going to get a trouble from the controller because the controller at this point is going to say whoa now I can't talk to this guy I've lost my connection so what I like to do is actually say no at this point and update the controller and then reset all of them at the same time so now we'll go back and I'll click update and I will go find my folder but this time we'll back up a file I will go to my controller folder there is my controller ASU file highlight that and you notice up here all the secondary units disappeared and only my controller is here so I will push that now if you had multiple global networks or multiple controllers they would all be listed here and you could push them all out at the same time as well so I am going to highlight that and we'll go down here to the update icon and click that and I'll hang with you on this one. This goes really, really fast to the controllers because it's not pushing it out through the ATS net. It's actually doing it direct. And there you go. It's that fast. That was real time. And I'll say no to reset machine here. And the reason is because I would have had to reset twice and it would have powered down. We would have been here an extra, you know, minute or so. But what I like to do at this point is highlight this. And in your menus to the right, there is an option that says Reset Machine. So you can remotely reset any secondary units or control units. So when I do that, it brings up all of them in the local network. I'll just hit All, and then I'll click Reset. And now it's resetting all of the units in my local network together. And it will go through its boot up process. Okay. Now we have reset the machine and I have a trouble which is not to worry because usually with the troubles whenever we do this that's because you might have had monitoring turned off and then when you've updated or whatever it defaulted back to on uh, maybe there's a network connectivity or as I did we did a jump from 6 to 18 beta version and maybe there's an issue with the software. So let's take a quick read of the version to make sure that everything got on the right version and that we didn't have any problems with our update we'll highlight it click read version it's checking and as we can see here all of them are 30018 30018 everything's happy alright and I got a trouble now troubles no big deal because I have a software and it's got different software design stored inside the machine even though the firmware is different so what I like to do at this point is I like to go and open up a file and this is going to be the files that we set there and saved earlier so we will open up the design file there it is there is the design file and one thing I like to do is come in and compile and once we compile it then we go in and we will store the design and we didn't do the mapping so once I click on the mapping there they are once we got the mapping done we can come back and store and now we're storing the program in there and that should eliminate any faults because now we put the program that was in there previously back in there and it's also running on the current firmware and software and we're back online all my troubles have gone away we are ready to go so that is how you update your system just make sure you follow simple rules um, launch the program you wish to update to 
and then connect to your IDA8 and then update to the software you're using at the time always update the secondary units before you update the controllers if after you do that I like to reset both machines together or power down the machines either way will do the same thing when you click on reset on the right then what that does is that makes sure it resets all the secondary units especially if they're remote from the controller the other thing to make sure you do is I like to open up the file, compile and store the file, make sure your mapping is okay. All you got to do is click on mapping once you loaded the file and once you store, you should be fine and your trouble should have gone away and you should be clean and green. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions, please visit us at www.penton-usa.com. Thank you and have a terrific day.